So to find a download files from Amazon S3, we'll need to define the name of the bucket that we'll be using. So in this case, I'm using a bucket called snip-videos. Assign that to the bucket name variable for future reference. And so to list out files that are in that bucket, we'll use the get S3 object commandlet and just specify the bucket name. But you can see that this returns all files and folders in the bucket. And there's quite a few of them, so there's a really long scrolling list there. But we can filter that down a little bit. So we can specify a single file by using the key parameter. So line 12, I've got the full name of a file in that bucket. And again, using the get S3 object commandlet, we can see that it just returned that one file. But if you need to filter for files that start with, say, a certain prefix, you can do that with the key prefix parameter. So line 20, you can see my key prefix I'm setting to how to, and passing that to get S3 object, we can see that this will return all of the files and folders that start with how to. There's quite a few of them though, 1098 to be exact. So if we need to limit that count, there is a max key parameter. And you can see here line 29, I'm setting that to 15. So this should return just 15 of the keys that start with how to. So there you go, there's 15 of them. And there are other ways to, to find files as well. Uh, there's the marker parameter, and you can see I'm setting that to S. What that refers to is that it will find the first file or folder that starts with S and return all the files and folders thereafter. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we use the get S3 object commandlet here, I am also piping that to format table to keep the output a little cleaner here. The first key I found was one that started with scaffolding. So that's the first S. And then it returned all the rest of our files and folders that started with S or letters thereafter. So let's say let's change this to a W and run that again. That's going to return all the W's and after. But in this case, there are no files and folders to start with a letter after W. So then downloading the files. So to download files from S3, there's the read S3 object commandlet. And there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, the first example I want to go over is specifying a specific key. So much like we first demonstrated with get S3 object, I've got a single key here on line 49. And then I'm specifying line 50, the output file. So this is the file that it will download the S3 file to. So if we use read S3 object, it's going to take it a moment to get the file downloaded. And there you can see it's giving the output of that file on the local file system. And so if I do a get item for that file, then yeah, I can see it's just the same output. And so I'll go ahead and remove it so it doesn't get in the way of future downloads. And we can use that key prefix parameter as well to download files. It's a little different than the get S3 object. And here, let me show you how. So the key prefix here, I'm setting to the how. And if I pipe that to read S3 object, you notice it went pretty fast, but I'm also using line 62, the folder parameter. So I'm having it download all those files and folders into a folder. But if we use get child item to look at that folder, there is nothing in it. That is because the key prefix parameter specifically needs to reference here on line 69, the full name of a folder in S3. So here is an example. The string I've got here is the full name of a folder in S3. So I'm going to assign that to the key prefix. And then here I can demonstrate that using the get S3 object. We can see that there are actually files in that folder. And so if we run read S3 object with that same parameters from before, but with the new key prefix, what we should see are those two files downloaded into our local file system. So there's giving us the output of that directory. So we'll do a get child item on that folder. And we can see we've got our file, we've got a raw on MP4s, but I'm going to remove those for now. We got another, another example coming up. So we also have the modified since date parameter for read S3 object. So here as an example, I've got the same key prefix from before. We know those two files are there, but we only want to download them if they've been modified since 24 hours ago. So I'm using git days minus one, the same folder. And so if we run this command, well, we still get the output of that folder, but if we look at git child item, there's nothing actually in there because none of those files were modified in the last 24 hours. I've got a key prefix here of this, of a folder that has some files that were modified in the last 24 hours. So if we update that key prefix and use the same parameters from before, you can see we've got the same output, so we, we still have to check that folder to see what items are in it. But this time we can see that we've got a final.mp4 
And if we were to use the get S3 object with that same key prefix here, line 93, you can see that we've actually got two items, but only the file that MP4 was modified in the last 24 hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up as well. So that's how you use PowerShell to find and download files from Amazon S3. Thanks for watching.